Happy Friday, everybody. Hope you got through your week just well enough. I, I certainly did. My son had surgery yesterday and everything went well. He is recovering. Hopefully, uh, it's just a matter of making sure he doesn't get an infection, infection as uh, he just recovers from the surgery itself. And hopefully, he should be coming home today, potentially tomorrow, but uh, hopefully, he should be home by the time this episode even comes out. So, we're ready for that and you guys should be ready for today's episode of our sponsor yes sponsor time today's video is sponsored by babel the number one language learning app in the world babel allows you to learn language in real time in ways that are actually useful language for real life it prepares you for situations that you would actually encounter in daily conversations that are going around babel is great for a lot of people whether you're language learning for schooling reasons because you're schooling at home right now or if you just need a refresher you want to advance in your professional career babel offers everything that you need in order to learn a language of your choice and babel's better than the competition because they don't have any ads they provide language for real life and the proof is in the results because there's been university studies that have shown that 15 hours of Babel equals one semester of college Spanish so that you can get ahead on everything that you're trying to learn we're currently learning Spanish with my kids and I can bust out this phrase they can try to figure it out as they learn more with Babel donde esta la biblioteca me llamo tibo en la araña discoteca I can't do the rolling R's thing yet but I'll figure that one out so if you head to the link down below using my sign up link you get 50% off six months for a limited time only at the link in the video description. 50% off to learn a language, whether it's for school, whether it's just trying to advance your career or refreshing yourself like I need to because I took several semesters of college Spanish and have forgotten in the subsequent decade that I've been out of college. So check out Babbel down below. Big thanks to them for sponsoring today's video. Thank you for helping me pay those medical bills by checking out our sponsor and by watching this episode. So let's talk about Intel because they had their Intel Architecture Day, which happened to be a big day for them with regards to all of the different stuff that they have coming up. Intel delivers advances across six pillars of technology. They've got their Super Min plus redefined FinFET equals Super Fin stacking technology to create new transistors and new ways of making chips. It's great. Then they have the redefined and the FinFET. They got their largest intranode performance delta in our history, finally going to 10 nanometers. <laughs> Ah, then all this is just them showing off everything that's good. Tiger Lake SOC architecture is supposed to be really dope. Packaging technology roadmap, CPU core roadmap, Sunny Cove, Willow Cove, Golden Cove, Lakefield, Alder Lake, which is a hybrid version, Tremont, and Gracemont. We got all that coming out, as well as the upcoming projects Z Graphics, which they have announced is going to be into different versions, including mid range enthusiast, data center, HPC Exascale, integrated plus entry tree and then it's going to be stacked in different ways so project z is going to scale because it's going to have it's going to be socketed these are going to be socketed gpus which is quite an interesting way for them to go about it but the one that you and i care the most about the one that we think might potentially go toe-to-toe -to -toe with nvidia in amd is this little guy right here the project z hpg which has a to be announced microarchitecture, standard packaging and an external process so that likely means that it's not going to be made by intel it's probably going to be made by tsmc as has been mentioned uh in plenty of other rumors which is highly intriguing intel's going this route but it also is going to have ray tracing and will hopefully be on par. So Raja Kadori showed off all of this information with regards to their graphics card department. And you can check it out at the links in the video description. Intel's architecture day, in case you want to watch, it's a two hour and 42 minute video. You can check out the whole thing, but suffice it to say, Intel is moving forward with their GPUs. It does look like they're going to come toe to toe to toe with AMD and Nvidia, and you can expect an all blue PC to be possible sometime next year, as opposed to the all AM, or all red AMD PC. And then if, you know, Nvidia picks up ARM, then you have an all green PC. We're gonna start seeing more competition from the same players. Great, good stuff. But this does fly into the face of a rumor that we heard previously that we talked about here at Hot News about a week and a half ago, which is from Adore TV, where they talked about the fact that it looked like Intel was gonna kill off the Project Z line and say that Raja Kadori was going to leave Intel and that they were gonna dissolve Project Z. It would be highly unusual for this to be true and then for them to make Raja Kadori the focus of Architecture Day and unveil all of the roadmap going forward. So make it that what you will, but Intel 
Hill continuing at least publicly facing saying that they're moving f forward with everything. Although, to be fair, just because they say they're going to do something like 10 nanometers doesn't mean they're always going to accomplish it. I mean, it's, they're still talking about getting to 10 nanometers and how it's going to be the best ever. Speaking of best ever, UFDstore.com. Speaking of best ever, there was a big bamboozle that went on yesterday between Epic Games and Apple because Epic Games decided that they had had enough of Apple taking a 30% cut of all the transactions that they had, and they're just gonna take 30% off the price themselves and allow people to pay them directly in the App Store. You can see here, there's the Apple App Store payment for V-Bucks for $10 or Epic Direct payment for $8. And so they are going to make more than they would with the Apple App Store, but get everybody a discount. Well, Apple didn't take too kindly for that. They removed Fortnite from the App Store, but it looked like Epic Games was kind of anticipating and kind of goading that one out of Apple, which they then retorted with the parody of Apple's 1984 ad with the hashtag free Fortnite campaign. 1980 Fortnite is the video that they released. You can watch it at this YouTube link. Anyways, it's essentially Apple's ad where they kind of tried to show that they weren't part of 1984. The idea is to prevent 2020 from becoming 1984 by hashtag freeing Fortnite because Apple's restrictive app store policies make it so that developers and publishers can actually make money the way that they need to on the platform. And on top of that, Epic Games decided that they are going to sue Apple over this. So it does seem like it was intentional. Epic Games intentionally got Fortnite removed from the Apple App Store. They knew this was the reaction Apple was going to come out with. So they filed legal papers in regards to this and are suing them for antitrust violations for having a monopoly on the app store for their phones with epic games saying that they would make their own app store if apple would let them but they don't so that's not cool dog but the general idea and takeaway from this is that apple and epic games only care about making money however there is this good tweet to review and it is that do i care that the company that is worth 17 billion dollars wants a better deal from the two trillion dollar company not really, but I do want the indie teams who are making cool stuff and just trying to survive to have a better deal. And I don't think Apple or Google will listen to any of them without Epic. This is a much bigger fight than Epic Games making Fortnite money. If all of their Fortnite money went away on iOS, they'd likely still be fine. But as Luke from Floatpoint Media can attest to, Apple has some really arbitrary and ridiculous policies that prevent apps from being published because of their just draconian measures that they take in the name of security when in reality it's just them being in control of everything and creates an environment where they have the last say of what's going to thrive in the app environment and what's not which kind of violates some antitrust protocols anyways what do you think of the epic games versus apple showdown let me know down in the comments but the TikTok versus U.S. government showdown heated up just a little bit with the Wall Street Journal coming out with a report that TikTok apparently used a loophole within Android to track MAC addresses of people's phones. MAC addresses, in case you're not familiar, are unique identifiers to your actual device, not like an advertising ID that Google uses that's randomized and is hiding your security. If they have your MAC address, they can trace it back specifically to that and Google blocks third party apps from reading it, but TikTok went around those predictions and did it anyways. TikTok said that they stopped this back in November, so they haven't been tracking you the entire time, but does kind of give more credence to the fact that TikTok has been subverting some security measures in order to relay information either to themselves for monetary gain or back to the Chinese government for whatever spying purposes that helps with. But whatever this helps with, it, this is a weird segue. Anyways, let's talk about the RTX 30 series for a second because there's a new rumor out there that the RTX 30 series high-end cards are gonna feature over 20 chokes on the PCB, which would be ridiculous considering the size of the PCB. It does seem like Nvidia is taking the design and power delivery of their boards very seriously if this is the case and would mean that this is probably the highest end card ever, which just makes, makes a ton of sense. Okay, 
makes a ton of sense. I'm still sticking to the idea that these are the RTX 21 series and that uh, my, my conspiracy is they give a bunch of different names to a bunch of different companies that were like producing shrouds for them. And so they know which one leaked it because it's called RTX 30. And when that's, they, they Nvidia tracks this, okay? It's just like when Marvel gives out different versions of the script and when they find which one got posted, they know exactly who to blame. That's what's happening here. And it's not in the RTX 3080, but they know exactly who took a picture of that and they made a stop to that. I'll tell you what. Anyways, you know who's not stopping Huawei, even though there's trade issues going on? Intel, because Huawei's 24 core, seven nanometer Kung Pang CPU apparently beats the i9 9900K in multi-core Geekbench scores, which I would hope so at three times as many cores. You know, that just, it would it would be great. The single core performance was not released. My guess is it's bad. You're not, you're not gonna get your hands on this anytime soon, but more competition in the CPU space. We'll see if that goes down. And what went down, unfortunately, was a second large largest telescope in the world. In Puerto Rico, the Arecibo radio telescope suffered some serious damage when some structure failed, causing a cable to snap and slice a hundred foot damage hole into the radio telescope. Big sad, big, big sad. This was managed by the University of Central Florida and was used in the search for extraterrestrial intelligence amongst other projects that it was used for and is gonna take a while to recover. <sighs> sucks and what also sucks is that avatar the last airbender was getting a live action remake on netflix that was being show run by the original showrunners well it turns out that they are leaving the project because they are saying that netflix just isn't really working on what they had they realized that they couldn't control the creative direction of the series so they chose to leave the project and with the new show that comes out won't be what they envisioned or intended to make, which, uh, I mean, for a company, Netflix, that made the Death Note movie, you think you would trust other people's visions sometime, especially with a series as beloved as Avatar. I mean, I I didn't watch this growing up. I recently watched it with my kids like two months ago, and it is a phenomenal kids cartoon. It is like, it is great. You cannot bastardize it like Ammonite Shalomalon, okay? Don't do that. Which for all we can say, right? Like, let's talk about bad anime adaptations. Dragon Ball Evolution was horrific, but at least the director came out and said, yeah, I screwed that up. I didn't take the source material seriously. I, I was, I was in a, I just, I didn't respect it and I deserve to be bashed for it. Whereas M. Night Shyamalan comes out and says, no, my Avatar movie was great. My kids loved it. So why don't you just shh? No, no respect for the fact that he ruined it. Speaking of ruined things, Blockbuster, not ruined. There's one left in Bend, Oregon, and they are hosting an Airbnb sleepover in September. They are opening it up to residents of the county that Bend, Oregon is in. They're gonna have reservations go live on Monday, August 17th with the available sleepover nights of September 18th, 19th, and 20th with up to four people doing it. I think I read somewhere that it was gonna be about $3, but it's supposed to be a just kind of grateful thank you to the community of Bend, Oregon for keeping the last Blockbuster alive which is kind of cool for nostalgia reasons, but does does the Blockbuster business model make sense right now? And does, does sleeping in at, at this make sense in a pandemic? I mean, you can make it work. I'm just saying, to, I, if, if, everybody, if we didn't have Netflix, right, during this whole pandemic thing where everybody has to be, like, isolated, would you go to a physical place and touch all of the boxes that everybody had, else had touched in order to get your movie fix? I don't know. I don't know that I would do that. And I don't know if I'm going to pick up a Google Pixel 5, but there's some information coming out about that, and that it is an XL variant of the Pixel 4a with a Snapdragon 765G, and it's going to be cheaper than the Pixel 4. Of course, it would have to if it has a 765G. That's not a great processor, especially considering the fact that the OnePlus Nord has the same processor and comes in at $400. Yeah, you got to you gotta to make a, com a compromise somewhere there, Google. And speaking of compromises, PlayStation compromised on the DualShock 4. We know that the battery life was atrocious. Well, there's new pictures coming out and the battery capacity of the DualSense controller that's supposed to be on the PS5. You can see here, it is it is a chunky boy, but the battery capacity to be 1,560 milliamp hours, which is 56% larger than the 1,000 milliamp hour battery that's on the DS4. So that hopefully will provide quite a bit more battery life Hopefully, although they are implementing more features like haptic feedback on the triggers, which would make it so that the battery drains faster. We'll have to see 
where this goes. And we'll have to see if we're gonna get any more details on the Xbox because the new rumor on the street is that the, the an event that was supposed to take place in August to announce more details on this has been delayed. And the best thing we're gonna get is that it's gonna be released sometime in September or November, and then we'll have an actual event in September. We'll see how that pans out. And panning out with audio is what BBC wants. That's a good segue, Brett. BBC wants to do that with your iPhones and iPads when you go to their website and you try to listen to one of their radio drama series. It's their new audio experience immersive production tool called Audio Orchestrator, and you use your Mac computer and then it syncs to your iPhone or iPad to create a surround sound audio experience depending on the location of your devices, which is kind of neat. It's a kind of neat implementation of something that uh, is, it's just, it's, I just think it's neat. And I think this is neat. Microsoft's new Windows update will allow you to select your GPU according to the workload that you're gonna set. You can set your default high performance GPU and then based on power saving, high performance, et cetera, you can change the GPU that you're actually operating with and including making sure that when you're on Windows power saving, you are just choosing the Intel integrated graphics, which it should be doing that, but now you get to actually choose that just a little bit more granular control. And the granular control that I'm gonna give to you today is the fact that this episode is over. Big thanks to you guys for watching it. Big thanks to everybody who showed support for my son as he's been in this surgery stuff that's been going down. Big thanks to you guys for checking out today's sponsor, because I need the money to pay medical bills. Big thanks again to Babbel for sponsoring today's video. Use the link in the video description to save 50% off of the number one language learning app in the world. Do it, friends. Check it out. And that's going to be the end of this episode of Hot News. Don't forget to check out UFDstore.com. Hit the link, like button down below. Smash it, if you will. Get subscribed, stay up to date on all of our tech-related content. I'm Brett. You've been newsed. See you next week.